This is going to be so long. Oh my goodness. I need to cut down on what to talk about because we got nine beautiful goals over here and I talk about all the goals and this is going to be a much longer video if I go super in depth. The Vancouver Canucks are better than the best. They have just defeated the Boston Bruins for the first time in 14 years. They score nine goals. Yeah, it's not the first time in 14 years they beat Boston. They do that quite a lot nowadays. But it's the first time in 14 years the Canucks have scored nine goals in a game. It's a 9-3 to three win over the Bees. And before we get into the goals, let's talk about some of the points. JT Miller, three assists for three points. Louis Erickson, a goal and an assist for two points. Quinn Hughes gets two assists for two points. Troy Stetcher, trade rumor Troy, with a goal, two assists for three total points. Tyler Toffoli gets two goals and an assist for three points. He's up to four points in two games played as a Canuck. I think this guy needs to come back next year. The Vancouver Canucks now have 72 points in 61 games played. They are second in the Pacific, two points behind the Golden Knights, one point above the Oilers, and now it just feels great. I know the Bruins have played three games in the past four days. I know they're just coming off of a back-to-back, -back, and that sucks. Scheduling in the NHL, it can really be brutal once in a while. But that doesn't stop me from feeling happy about the Vancouver Canucks scoring nine goals. Let's go over everything here. It all starts out four minutes into the first period. This is when I was kind of getting stressed out because I was like, okay, we're playing the Bruins, the nerves, it's really, really strong right now. One mistake and the Boston Bruins can strike back and instantly take over a game. We saw them do that against the Calgary Flames. We got to be careful. And four minutes into the first period, it's Troy Stetcher, trade rumor Troy, the guy who we were talking about potentially being traded. It's like he heard all those trade rumors and was just like, nah fam, I'm sticking around a little bit more. Because it's Jay Beagle and Tyler Mott who cause a little bit of a ruckus. And then eventually it's Troy Stetcher on the side who sh she just shoves the puck towards the crease. It goes by Rask, it goes by Sutter, it goes by the D in front. I don't even remember who that is. Looked like a fluky goal for sure. Something that I was like, is that really going to count? But hey, it counted. Troy Stetcher's got four goals on the year, and four minutes into the first period, the Vancouver Canucks have bounced up to a lead, that's all great and all, but then, oh my goodness, David Pasternak's on a breakaway, yikes. David Pasternak scored a 44th goal on the year. Yeah, he's got 44. And this one was a crazy, crazy nice breakout pass from who other, but it's Gretzlick, the Pedersen hit into the boards guy. And Pasternak comes in on a breakaway, he does a little swoop, backhand fake, it's a beautiful fake, it's like NHL 20 beautiful dekes right there. Totally dekes up Markstrom, and then it's a tie game, it's 1-1. Markstrom then leaves the game because Danton Heinen, former Richmond Sokka by the way, big shout out to that, he gets his stick blade up into Markstrom's eye hole through the mask, it's very, very bad, but he eventually does come back, so that's good. But overall, it was nice to see Markstrom actually not be super affected by that because he did only let in two goals after the fact. And of course, that might not be the best sounding sentence in the world, but the fact of the matter is he played great for the majority of this game despite having that I thing. But before the first period was over, it was Bo Horvat who came in here on a power play goal assisted by JT Miller, assisted by Tyler Toffoli. It's played out for Horvat in front. He takes a shot. It's up and over. It's in the net. Bo Horvat has 19 goals on the year. JT Miller, that's his first assist on the night. He's got 36 assists. How about that? And of course, Tyler Toffoli getting his second point in as many games for the Vancouver. Canucks. The second period. That starts off and I'm like, okay, it's only a 2-1 lead. This is the Boston Bruins. This is the best team in the league. They're no Tampa from last year, but this is the best team in the league. They're really good. At any time, they can just push that button and just go straight to the moon and take control of a game. But 
Hey, 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 it's Quinn Hughes who takes the puck on the half boards. He comes in, Pasternak gets on him, but oh my goodness, Quinn Hughes avoids David Pasternak's check. Comes down below the goal line, sees the lane in front, throws it out over, and Adam Gaudet one-times that right into the corner. He pickpockets that perfectly. It is 3-1 to one Vancouver. Hughes has 40 assists on the year. Adam Gaudet has his 11th goal five minutes into the second period. And I'm starting to feel a little bit better. Hey, it's a 3-1 to one lead. That's not that bad, right? It's tough to cough up a 3-1 to one lead. Oh wait, the Leafs did that a few years ago. Speaking about the Leafs, we talked about that earlier today. But 10 minutes after that Adam Gaudet goal, it is Tanner Pearson who gets his 18th goal on the year. This one is assisted by Tyler Myers, who takes his time. Tyler Myers is on there on the backhand. He's got a whole bunch of time and space. Then he backhands it towards the crease. It is off of Louis Erickson, bounces to the ice, and then it's Pearson who scores it on the rebound. Really nice. Then give it about a minute later, and then Louis Erickson gets another very similar goal, where he's perched up in front, getting the dirty rebound as Horvat and Edler get assists on that play. Then the third period starts, I'm like, okay, it's 5-1, to one. Bruins fans, it's like, what, 11pm over there in Boston, they're probably going to bed. And then... Pedersen! Elias Pedersen, he comes in and he shoots and he scores! Hey, that's awesome! Assisted by JT Miller and Troy Stetcher. Miller is at 37 assists on the year. Pedersen, with his 25th goal, he just finds the perfect lane over there. Really nice shot, really nice goal. It's 6-1, starting off the third period, and all of a sudden things couldn't be looking better, and then, oh my goodness, David Pasternak. Okay, that's fine. It's a power play goal, really nice passing play over there. Pasternak with the one T. It's 6-2. I'm not going to get too worried about that. David Pasternak, you know, you can take 45 goals on the year. That's perfectly fine by me, but we still have the lead, right? And it's like that for two minutes, and then Chris Wagner scores, and I'm starting to freak out. Oh my goodness, we're actually going to blow this lead, aren't we? The Vancouver Canucks are going to blow a lead, just like the Calgary Flames did a few days ago. Or yesterday. I forgot when that was. But this one was also assisted by, you guessed it, Gretzlick, the Pedersen hitting to the boards guy. I felt like I said that earlier in the video, because I know I said exactly that. But... Just a few minutes after that, the Vancouver Canucks come back and they start to calm me down afterwards again because JT Miller throws it out in front for Tyler Toffoli to get his first as a Vancouver Canuck, Miller's third point of the game, Toffoli's second point of the game, his 19th goal overall, and it comes with about nine minutes left. It's 7-3 Vancouver. And then, two minutes later, Quinn Hughes, after a big, mad scramble out in front, throws it into the middle for Tyler Toffoli to get his 20th goal in the year, and second in the game, second as a Canuck, and his fourth point as a Canuck in general. Quinn Hughes has 41 assists, and Tyler Toffoli makes it 8-3. to three. Add to that a Troy Stetcher assist again with Alex Edler, up to Jake Vertanen, who comes in, and he absolutely snipes his 17th goal on the year, the right-handed shot coming down the left side. The guy's absolutely able to wrist it because he's on that offside. It's Yaro Halak this time, too. It's been Yaro Halak for the past few goals, but the Vancouver Canucks take this one in what was an absolutely crazy game of emotions. It started off really intense. I was really freaking out because we got the best team in the league coming to play in Rogers Arena, but the Canucks quickly got up to the lead and they just kept applying pressure after that. They didn't let up and that was really, really great to see. Really great to see the overall effort and the poise that the Vancouver Canucks were able to show throughout this entire game and they come away with the win. Oh boy, that feels really, really great. Demko didn't have to make any saves when he did come in for a very minor span of relief. Markstrom makes 34 saves on 37 shots, a 919 save percentage. Tuka Rask, man, I'm going to be honest, this was just a bad game for him. So many of those goals were stinkers. He's got guys in front. He's got guys battling out with his other guys on the rebounds. Ugly game for Rask overall, but for the Vancouver Canucks, I can't say that I hated it. That was a beautiful game. Nine goals the first time in 14 years. Hope you enjoyed this video. This was all recorded in one take, so I feel very proud about that. Social Network 9.
and bye.